Ooh, I've got some forge points. Let me just put them on my Oracle of Delphi, and then I can- My liege, stop. Why, Banjabar? I just want to level up my great building. Of course, but there are so many different ways. My team of scientists has devised four different ways to level your buildings, each even more powerful than the last. Huh, I guess so. Let's get right into it. The first, and worst, method is self-leveling. This means just simply putting forge points on your own great buildings or leveling it by yourself. You get no rewards from other players for this, and other players don't get rewards from you unless they happen to snipe you. What's a snipe? It's when another player puts unwanted forge points on your great building, often paying less than a fair rate for rewards, usually making a profit. For self-leveling, this can actually be helpful, but it is something that the following methods will try to avoid. Regardless Regardless, self-leveling is probably the way you leveled your great buildings at the start of the game, and you should never do it again. On the Manjubar, this is my video. Oh, alright then. Go ahead, my lord. Thank you. And the next method of leveling is the most common across all of Forge of Empires, as far as I can tell, swap threads. They're super easy to understand, but they have some faults. These are a slight step up from self-leveling, and usually take place inside message center threads for specific Forge point amounts. In case you've never used swap threads, the idea is that you usually post your great building that you want level, then pay a set sum of Forge points to the players who posted their great building before you. The next player to attach their great building to the thread will then pay the same amount of Forge points to to you in an endless loop. This way you're able to get some rewards like forge points, medals, and blueprints while leveling your great building at the same speed that you would if you were self-leveling. However, swaps are not without their shortcomings. Swap threads still leave your buildings open to being sniped as none of the spots are locked, which I'll touch on later, and unless you have a large amount of daily forge points to spend, you might get pushed to lower spots on great buildings by other players who can spend much more than you per day. In fact, it's possible for you to get no rewards at all in some cases, at which point swaps aren't that much better for self-leveling. At least with swaps though, other players are able to gain rewards from your great buildings. As for the next method, um, Mandrubar. Yes, my lead. Why is method number three just a drawing of a triangle? I don't even know what this is supposed to mean. Ah, this method was hidden deep within the annals of the town hall. We found the forgotten writings of some ancient called the forum member named Algona. Wait, you mean this Algona? On the US forums? Oh, I guess so. Oh, perfect. I do know what this means then. The third method is known as the reverse triangle, and Algona's full post on this will be linked in the description. At heart, it is an improved version of a swap thread meant for a small group of players looking to level the same great building. It might be slightly slower than swaps, but it is 100% safe from snipes, and you agree upon which rewards you'll see from the beginning. So how does this work? Let's say we have three players, named A, B, and C, who each have roughly the same amount of daily forge point production. They decide which which great building they all want to level, hopefully around the same level for each player. Then they settle upon a number of daily forge points, each will contribute, and it has to be a number divisible by 3, usually either 15 or 30 forge points, or even more. In this case, the players decide on 15 per day. Every day, player A puts 10 forge points, or two-thirds the daily total, on player B's building, and the remaining 5, or one-third of the total, on player C's. Player B puts 10 on C's and 5 on A's, and so on for player C, making a triangle of payment. This continues every day until the person paying two-thirds of the forge points per day has paid half the total forge points needed to level the great building, at which point the player contributing one-third has paid a quarter of the total. This ensures that the first two spots on the great building are completely safe and locked, as if another player was to put forge points on the great building, they could not pay more than the other player's contributions and take a higher spot on said great building. At this point, the owner then finishes leveling the great building however they choose, usually in swaps or a 1.9 this method may not be for everyone, as it is slower than other methods on this list. Additionally, the reverse triangle method is unable to be used in the sweet spots of great buildings, which we'll discuss with the next message, which are drop, drop threads. threads. These are the most powerful and most common high-level strategies. Manjubar, I appreciate your help, but I've got this. I'll fund some more research soon to keep you busy. I think we're just on the cusp of a new age. I cannot wait to get back to my lab. Where were we? Ah yes, drop threads, also known as 1.x threads, commonly 1.8, 1.9, or 1.92 threads. These are the fastest way to level a great building, and also are the cheapest way. These are enabled via the power of the Arcs bonus, which boosts contribution rewards for other players' great buildings. At level 80, which is the most common level to stop at for an Arc, this boost gives you 1.9 times the amount of rewards from a spot, and this is used to take spots on great buildings for free. So what is a 1.9 thread, and how does it work? It means that players 
players taking spots on great buildings pay 1.9 times the contribution reward amount. In short, that means when the building is leveled, they get back the exact amount of forge points that they paid, as well as blueprints and metals on top. The owner of the great building puts the forge points needed to lock the spot before other players can put forge points on, making it so that once a player pays their forge points, they cannot be sniped. This is known as priming spots. There are many calculators online for finding the numbers for each level of a great building, my favorite being foe.tools, which I've linked below, because you can set up custom messages that I use to keep track of my costs. You don't have to do any math, but place forge points and take other players' spots on their great buildings. The benefit? You can save thousands of forge points via this method. In a swap thread, you're getting the exact same number of forge points back on your great building as you are placing on others, but in a 1.9 thread, you pay much less than the total cost of the level, saving you thousands of forge points. As this method is a little bit more complicated, there's a couple tips you should follow to make it easier and safer. First, only post spots to a 1.9 thread that are primed, and don't over prime, which means putting too many forge points over what is needed to prime the spot. This makes it possible for those spots to be easily sniped for profit, which will mess up your numbers for subsequent spots. Also, don't prime for all the spots at once, unless you are in a very fast 1.9 thread or rushing, meaning that you get a group of players together to level your great building super fast. If you prime for all the spots, this leaves you open to getting sniped aggressively, so do not do this ever. If any of this sounds hard though, just try out a 1.9 thread. It takes some time to get used to it, but once you do, you'll see just how powerful it can be, and you'll never look back. Additionally, for all methods of leveling great buildings, the building will reach a series of levels known as the sweet spot. This means that on a 1.9 thread, the owner does not have to pay any forge points to prime a spot, so as soon as one of these levels is unlocked, it is immediately open to being sniped. Be careful when leveling through a sweet spot with any of these methods if you do not wish to be sniped. And if you're using a 1.9 thread in the sweet spot, try to have players standing by to take spots as soon as you unlock the great building. Do you have any tips for leveling great buildings? Tell me in a comment down below. If you like this guide, you might also like my guide on when to advance to higher ages, linked on screen now. See you next time!